uh, the Care Minister, Helen Wakeley, live on BBC Breakfast. The figures around uh, vaccination in care homes is one of our major stories this morning. So it'll be interesting to see her take on who hasn't been vaccinated yet. There are um, stories of several homes which haven't been visited yet. And also the uptake of the vaccine amongst care home staff. Uh, do let us know what you think about that this morning. We'll be asking Helen Wakeley those questions in a moment. All right, now we can catch up with the news, the travel and the weather. Wherever you're having breakfast. Welcome back. You are watching Breakfast with Dan and Louise. It's just gone uh, 7.30. One of the issues we are looking at this morning is the vaccination rollout reaching residents of elderly care homes in England. Well, as promised, let's speak now to the Social Care Minister, Helen Waitley, who joins us live on the programme this morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much um, for being with us. Can, can we start with um, the headlines, which many people will be waking up to this morning? One of the papers says vaccine rollout to care homes is complete. Um, is it complete? Is there a difference between people being offered the vaccine and receiving the vaccine? Oh, good morning. Really good to be here. And to be able to be here with some really good news. As you're saying, uh, we have been getting out to care homes. The NHS has now had teams go in to vaccinate in over 10 thousand care homes we've got the care home uh, the vaccination out to all the care homes you can have it at the moment who are looking after older people um i would say you no know, totally up front there are a small number where there's a current outbreak in the director local director but this is just a huge moment for our social care sector and for our care homes who've had such a hard time during this pandemic and this is a real turning point where at last those residents some of the most vulnerable people to COVID have at last got some protection from this really, really cruel, cruel disease. Do you, do you have an idea, um, Care Minister, when it might be completed? Because there are, as you mentioned there, there are some care homes that haven't yet been visited. Is the only reason they haven't been visited because there's been an outbreak of the virus there? I said so there's just a small number where where there's a current outbreak and, and some care homes who've got outbreaks have been visited and those have been visited uh, and those who can receive the vaccine have been vaccinated. Just a small number um, where so the director of public health has identified it's not OK for the teams to go out there at the moment, but they will be vaccinated shortly. Um, and, and, and of course, over the next couple of weeks, uh, we're going to be continuing to vaccinate care workers, particularly those care workers who um, uh, look after people in their own homes, uh, so that we make sure that we have, by the 15th of February, vaccinated everybody who's uh, in the most vulnerable categories in those one to, to four and the uh, health and care workers who look after them. Do you have any numbers for us this morning about, about how many care homes are yet to be visited? Uh, well, the health secretary is going to be giving out further information, uh, making an announcement on this later today. There will also be data published on Thursday, uh, as the vaccination data is re regularly published on Thursday. So that's when there'll be able to be some, some more numbers for you to get into. OK, can I ask you about some, some other numbers in terms of uh, care home staff uh, not having the vaccine? Because the National Care Association, their estimation is that it might be as many as between 6 and 8% of those workers. Now, that could be a number anywhere between 90,000 and 120,000. Is that in line with what you think those figures are? And how concerning is it that there are a, a number of care home workers of that magnitude who haven't yet and aren't keen on having the virus, uh, having the vaccine? Well, I'm hearing really good news from the care homes and care providers that I have spoken to about staff uptake of the vaccine. Uh, we know that you know, there were some staff who were worried about the idea of having the vaccination. But what I'm hearing is when the vaccination teams go into the care homes, um, staff are coming forwards. Uh, and you know, some might be nervous, but when they see their colleagues getting the vaccination, when they see that it's all right, when they see that it's something you know, more that they can do to help protect themselves and to help protect those that they look after, we really are seeing good uptake from uh, care home workers. And as I said, over the next couple of weeks, we'll be making sure we vaccinate more of the home care workers and the wider social care workforce as well. OK, but, it, but is a good uptake enough when... Um, 30% of deaths from coronavirus have been in care homes, up to 40% if you include um, about that. Well, I mean, I think it's a really important point that we want to see uh, care workers get vaccinated, all part of everything that we can do to protect those who are most at risk from this virus. Uh, the approach that we're taking and working with local authorities, 
with the, the care sector is on giving people the information they need to be reassured about the safety of the vaccination, um, you know, sharing the stories that people have had the vaccination and that they're okay, and knowing that they're playing their part, you know, encouraging people, supporting people, making it as easy as possible to get the vaccination. So, you know, if you're in a care home, you're a care worker, you can get vac vaccinated there, and um, for other care workers to be able to get it uh, locally, to, to be easy to, to get it, as well as you know, having the information, you know, to be confident to get vaccinated. So you wouldn't compel a, a, a worker in a care home to have the vaccine? So I think, you know, at the moment, as I say, we're really focusing on getting the vaccine, firstly, as I said, to, to the residents and those who are to working in care homes and supporting people to, to come forward and get vaccinated. And that's the approach that we're taking. Um, and, 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 you know, let's, let's give us some time to, to, to let care workers come forward and get themselves vaccinated. When will it be safe, do you think? Because this is something which we always come back to. It's uh, you ask a really important question, and, and I know that relatives um, are desperate to go and see their family members. I know residents uh, desperately want to have have visits, and at the moment, visits are really you know, quite constrained to, to with screens or visiting pods and uh, outdoors and things like that. So we do want to be able to enable indoor visiting to happen again for people to be able to you know, hold hands and hug and th those things. I would say at the moment, it's too soon. We've had care home residents only just vaccinated. We know it takes time to build up uh, immunity. Um, and, and we also know we have you know, really high rates of COVID still in the wider community. Uh, so we can't say it's, it's OK to open up yet. Um, and I know I'm saying to, to care home still, you know, please you know, keep using the PPE, uh, keep doing all the testing uh, that they're doing at the moment. We still have to keep on vi being vigilant. Um, we've just got to give it a little more time. So it won't be until everybody... Actually, I'm not saying that, and we are working on right now, you know, what can we do in order to be able to uh, allow some more normal visiting, to allow indoor visiting to start again? How can we use testing uh, to use that? Now, what uh, confidence can we have as, as community rates should come down further um, in the wider community, which is what poses the biggest risk to, uh, to care homes? I'll absolutely say we're looking at it, just because I know just you know, how important it is actually to, to the health and to the, the physical and mental health of those living in care homes and their families to be able to, 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 to have contact. I'm sure you've seen, you know, there's, I, I know it's a really difficult balance, isn't it, between keeping things safe and... Oh, I mean, I, I, I absolutely know just how incredibly hard it is. And I will say one of the best moments for me last year uh, was when I was speaking to a lady who'd been in to see her mother to actually, you know, to be able to, to hold hands and do an indoor visit when we introduced testing back in December um, to enable uh, indoor visiting. Then we had the, the surge of the uh, new variant, these rates that we've seen um, making, make, bringing, bringing the risks up again. So as, as I said, you know, we are working on what we can do to try and enable visiting to restart because I absolutely see just how important it is. Um, can I ask you um, a slightly broader question about a case that only after every adult in the UK has been vaccinated or before that time? Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, absolutely, and I'm uh, hearing the conversations about that uh, too, and the questions being asked. I mean, what's it? No, right now, our priority is to vaccinate those in our country across the UK who are most at risk from uh, this virus. We're talking today about the vaccinations that, that have been going on in care homes. Between now and mid-February, we're determined to get out there and vaccinate all those um, that we can in groups uh, one, priority groups one to four, so including the clinically extremely vulnerable, um, not just the over 80s, but also those in their 70s, so that by mid-February, we will have vaccinated 88% of the people who are most at risk of dying from COVID. Then we have the other priority groups to work our way through, which is particularly those who are older. So we know that, that, that people who are older are at you know, greater risk in general from, from the virus. So we've got our work cut out. I mean, we're doing a tremendous job. As you said, nearly 9 million people have been vaccinated, but we've got our work cut out to make sure that we get on and work through those who are at greatest risk so that, that everybody wants life to, to move on, to the economy to be uh, back in business, schools to, to, to be open again uh, for children, all these things ahead. So, so we've got a lot to do for, for, with our own vaccination programme. Um, one other thing that's on a lot of people's minds is, you know, we're outside the hospital awaiting, hopefully, some good news at some stage. 
Oh, I really hope that we get good news. I mean, uh, Captain Tom Moore has been such an inspiration uh, to us all in those you know, really dark days that we've we've been through over the last year, um, and seeing him you know, battling his his way through and and and, and lifting our spirits. So, you now I, I really hope that that he pulls through, and I really hope we can get some good news. My thoughts are with him and his family. Helen Waitley, uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, and actually, while we were speaking to Helen Waitley, one of the other stories we were looking at this morning is um, the military coup in... <laughs> You've got a couple of tips on, on things we can do <laughs> while we're in lockdown. Uh, just, just run us through them. Yeah, so um, I, one of my things is it's really difficult. So in terms of your mental health, exercise is the number one thing. My little tips. <laughs> exercise is the number one thing to do. Um, to support your mental health. So walking, running, cycling, pretend skipping. So even if you don't have a skip your rope at home, you can just pretend to skip on the spot. Yeah. I actually have pretended to skip so much that when I have a rope, I can't actually jump the rope. That's how bad I am. Um, but then I've also got some balloons. And so there's elastic tied to these balloons and pretty much just keeping yourself mentally active. So whilst you're sitting down, you can... <laughs> <laughs> you're doing trying to do different patterns um, and then also um, balloons are really good they're not just for children so you could put some music on at home yeah. and basically during the song just try and keep the balloons off the floor so I'm going to do a very poor demonstration here but while the music's playing in the background you just throw up the balloons and then try <laughs> trying to keep them from touching the floor and um, if you've got people with you you can have a competition so let's get rid of those if you have people who live with you or on, online, you can have a competition. So play the same song, try and keep the blues up. Um, a song typically is three or four minutes, so it does get you working. And count how many times your balloons touch the floor, send a competition to someone else so they can see how many times their balloons touch the floor. And um, if you've got people in your household, you can use two balloon colours. So I could have the gold ones, someone else could have the colourful ones, and I'm trying to keep mine up whilst trying to hit theirs down to touch the floor. Just ways to get active. Emma, um, we're going to have to leave it, but I've, lo I've genuinely <laughs> loved that. I'm going to try that at home. Thank you very much indeed. I can imagine lots of people searching around to see if they've got balloons at home. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Really good to chat. Thank you. That's exactly and, what I was thinking. Yeah. Where, where do we keep the balloons in our house? <laughs> uh, what a creative idea. Um, time for the latest in our Lockdown Life series, where familiar faces give us hints and tips on how we can sort of get through things at home. Yep, today it's the turn of England's netball star, Amma Abwezi. Uh, she was captain when England won gold against Australia at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. And let's just remind ourselves of that bit of joy, shall we? History! They have made history! They have snatched the gold medal from Australia! They have taken it! They have taken it! Oh, the joy, the joy! <laughs> Amma joins us now from Auckland in New Zealand. We'll come to why you're there in a minute, but I mean, even watching that still now brings us joy, brings you joy as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds so... I didn't get the footage, but even just hearing the excitement from the commentators was really great, and it takes me back and it makes me feel warm and bubbly inside. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, uh, as Louise said, you, you'd probably better explain why you're in New Zealand, because you are based there. It's not, you, you've, not taken an, <laughs> you've not taken a trip against government advice, have you? <laughs> no, no. Um, so my husband is from New Zealand. I did actually, I did lock down in the UK between March and August, and then I managed to get to New Zealand in September. And life is very different here. Um, but I did struggle during lockdown in the UK and had to do managed isolation in a hotel for two weeks when I got to New Zealand. And then once I got out of managed isolation, Auckland was in lockdown. So I've had my share of lockdowns. As well. Gosh, there's so much to ask you about that. Um, tell us about, um, first of all, and I know you're going to help us with some exercises. I can see you've got equipment ready. Um, let's talk about managed isolation in a hotel. I mean, what was, what was that? You go through a process of queuing. There were army personnel. Um, filling in forms, seeing nurses, and then you basically are outside the room and you're in your room pretty much the whole day. You could go outside um, for an hour of exercise a day, um, but otherwise you're in your room. There was a, in the hotel that we were in, there was a coffee shop area. So as long as you were socially distanced, you could go and buy, you could pre-order your coffee, go and buy it, sit and drink it. And so they have QR codes, so every time you go into somewhere, somewhere in public to a shop, there's a code that you scan basically that says that you've been there and then they're able to trace people on public transport etc um but things are 
pretty much as normal. I think there's constantly a rhetoric of being mindful that coronavirus is still here. Um, every day on the news, they tell us how many cases are in managed isolation. So that's the hotel um, thing that I did. So there are cases there. Um, and then how many are in the community? And we've gone for a long time without community cases, but last week there were two community cases. So everybody gets heightened and on alert, but relatively speaking, everything is as, as normal and it's summer here as well. So people are going to beaches and just enjoying life, but mindful I that coronavirus yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? Is this going to work? Um, I mean, we're told from our public health teams who have been fantastic support for us all this that we're just starting to see the, the, the you know, some optimistic signs. So, you know, fingers crossed, um, this, this, you know, vaccination programme that we've done so well at is going to be our escape without us. When are you going to be back on your bike then? <laughs> oh, I'm back on lunchtime. I came, came in this morning. I do all my community on the on e-bike. The e there's, there's actually loads of GPs in Sheffield doing that. It's a, you know, Louise, don't you? It's really important to keep your exercise and, and get out there. It lifts the spirits. Oh, listen, I do. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr Ollie Hart. Thank you so much for your time. Particularly impressive in Sheffield where there's some decent hills. Oh, you said so, e-bike, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bit of help. Bit of help. <laughs> bit of help up the hills. <laughs> you probably need it. Stay with us. <laughs> Headlines are coming up shortly. Morning. Very good morning to you. Welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin. It's exactly eight o'clock. These are your Monday morning headlines. Captain Sir Tom Moore has been admitted to hospital with coronavirus. The Prime Minister is among the many who've uh, wished him well this morning. All care home residents in England have now been offered a vaccine. It's being hailed as an important milestone. But that apart, we're looking at some sunshine. I'll have more details later in the programme. And we wish you a speedy recovery, Captain Tom. As the pandemic led to repeated lockdowns, Captain Tom has always offered messages of hope and positivity, reminding us all to walk, to talk and to look after each other. It's now time for us to return the favour and to look forward to seeing that smile once again. John Maguire, BBC News, Bedford. And we'll be outside the hospital in Bedford with John McGuire a little bit later on this morning for uh, an update, if there is one, this morning. Elsewhere today, the NHS says every elderly care home resident in England has now been offered the coronavirus vaccine, which the Prime Minister has described as a crucial milestone. Uh, let's get more from our political correspondent, Adam Fleming, who joins us from Westminster. Um, and there are various targets, Adam, and you're keeping a look at them all. How are they doing? Morning. Morning. Well, the government has hit its first target for vaccinations, which is to offer a vaccine to all elderly care home residents in England. And that has now happened on target and on time. Although there are a couple of caveats. There are some care homes in England that have got outbreaks of coronavirus at the moment, so it's not safe for them to have the vaccine. And also this is about vaccines being offered as opposed to people actually definitely having them. And also, uh, if you're wondering if this means that visits to care homes for relatives can go back to normal, well, Helen Waitley, the care minister, was sounding very cautious on this programme this morning. We are working on right now, you know, what can we do in order to be able to uh, allow some more normal visiting, to allow indoor visiting to start again? How can we use testing uh, to use that? You know, what uh, confidence can we have as, as community rates should come down further um, in the wider community, which is what poses the biggest risk to uh, to care homes. I'll absolutely say we're looking at it just because I know just you know, how important it is actually to to the health and to the, the physical and mental health of those living in care homes and their families to be able to to, to, to have contact. The other target the government has is for the four most vulnerable groups on the list of priority for vaccination to get their injections by the middle of February. That's about 15 million people. So I reckon that the vaccination programme will have to speed up a bit if they're going to hit that target. And one government advisor this morning said to me it's going to be very tight. And in other vaccine news, the government's ordered another 40 million doses from the French company Valneva. Fleming, thank you for the update. A military coup has been carried out in Myanmar. News today, um, that's uh, everything. We'll be back at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Right now on BBC One, it is time for Morning Live. Good morning. Morning.